In this video, we're going to learn about David Allen's Getting Things Done methodology, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity. Life can be overwhelming with too much to do and regardless of how hard we work, we can often feel stuck and uncreative. When we are overwhelmed, unfulfilled, anxious, bored or lazy, we lose the ability to focus, see a clear perspective and often experience results like spending long hours at work, financial trouble, health problems, relationship issues and missed deadlines. Clearly, there must be a better way. But more technology is definitely not the way. Let me tell you my own story. I became an attending radiologist in 2009 after spending more than 10 years in medical training in three different countries. Day work was pretty exhausting. But if that wasn't enough, I was expected to be an amazing teacher and a world-class researcher. I knew time was running out. I was feeling overwhelmed, but I knew there was a better way. I needed to find those people who had it all figured out. My search led me to David Allen's work, and I completely connected with this statement. If you're appropriately engaged with your life, you don't need more time. If you're not, more time won't help. David Allen talks about this idea that time is not the issue. Everybody has the same 24 hours. The issue is having psychic bandwidth, which is the space to think and be creative. Before we jump into learning the specifics of the getting things done methodology, we should spend a few minutes talking about why we need to spend the time to learn about getting things done approach. For me, productivity techniques help me keep pace with ever increasing clinical research, mentorship and editorial responsibilities. The reason I learned these techniques in the first place was to balance my family life and to avoid having to constantly choose between spending precious time with my family and pursuing my never-ending work commitments. I knew that if there was an opportunity to make snow angels, I wanted to take it. And not just these cute jiggling icons, I'm talking about real life snow angels. Let's get back to getting things done. Step number one is to write things down. This brain dump can be done in any particular order and doesn't have to be organized. That being said, it takes longer than might be intuitive. The first time I did this, it took me about a week. It will feel awkward, unnecessary, and unnatural. After you do this, for the first time in your life, you're going to achieve a state called mind like water. Just like nature doesn't hurry, and yet everything is accomplished, for the first time in your life, your brain is free to react to what is in front of you, and you're nimble, just like a martial artist. Let's look at the algorithm. We all hold a lot of ideas, to-do lists, have a lot of email, and have phone calls to make. Step number one, process it outside of your head and write it down. Once you've written it down, look at that list and see what's actionable in that list. If things are no longer actionable, you're probably better off removing them completely for your life. But if you feel stressed out and don't want to get rid of things permanently, you may want to incubate them or reference them for future use. Now look at what's left in the list and look at the items that take less than two minutes to do. If you find some of these items, batch them up and do it now. There's no better time to do them than now. Next, look at the items that are going to take more than two minutes to do. There'll be several items that are outside of your skill set. These are things that you need to delegate. So just because you send somebody an email doesn't mean they're going to jump and, and start working on your projects. You need to delegate to someone and come to an agreement as to timelines and have a follow-up plan. The items that are left on your list are the items that you need to do yourself. This is the final step of the GTD model and you have to find the time to do these things. After having gone through this process, the next step is to find time for review. I find that for a weekly review, Sunday night is the best for me. I can look at what's coming up in the next week, find the days that are busy, find the days that are maybe not so busy where I can have some more time for family, for exercise. The next time for review is a three monthly review. It helps to review your entire calendar year in at least four different parts. And finally, the annual review in which you actually make some plans for what you hope to accomplish in a 12 month interval. Two of my favorite quotes from Robin Sharma 
that are very applicable at this time are only the things that are scheduled are the things that get done. So if you don't find time for stuff on your calendar, the odds are those things are not going to get done. The second code that I absolutely love is that the beginner does what's easy and the master does what's important. So let's look at the big picture. Now that we've learned about the GTD algorithm, take some time to learn about what's important to you, what are your values, and how your values correlate with those of your family. And then set about some goals that everybody is a part of. My number one productivity quote is by Peter Drucker where he says, there is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should never be done at all. So let's recap. Make your own system. Empty your mind. This will feel awkward, unnecessary, and unnatural. Review your project lists once per week. There are three core principles in the GTD methodology. First, capture your thinking. Write stuff down. Number two, make outcome or action decisions. Number three, use the right maps to get there. And finally, recalibrate so that when you look back at your life, hopefully you've spent time working on the things that mattered. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.